Hi, this is a discussion on potential energy versus internuclear distance. So what I've drawn here are two hydrogen atoms, and we're looking at the potential, the distance between the atoms as they come together to form an H2 molecule. Uh, this right here, I'm going to tell you straight out of the gate, is a sweet spot. So you have these two hydrogens. The protons in each hydrogen are going to be attracted to the electron in the opposite in the opposite um, atom. So they come together and they share electrons, okay? Um, so you're sharing electrons, but then something happens. <coughs> Excuse me. They come together, they share. There's the perfect bond. Um, however, you have protons. Remember that. If we push these even closer, the protons will start to repel each other. And that's what's drawn right here, as if we're forcing, forcing these um, these two atoms closer than what they can really go, um, than what they, the enter the magnetism, um, or the attraction, I should say, um, allows them to go. It's like when you take two positive net magnets and you push and you push and they kind of slide around each other and you're trying to force them together. That's what's happening right here. Um, now look at this. There's a potential energy right here. Um, and this shows the bond energy, the energy between this sweet spot where they're attracted, the electrons are attracted to the protons, opposite sides, um, but the protons aren't repelling each other. There's this perfect amount of attraction repulsion combination happening right there. From here to here, this would be measured in, uh, let's say, picometers. Um, from here to here, that's the bond length. That's the distance between those two hydrogens. Now, if I were to change this, let's do an oxygen bond and a nitrogen bond. So hydrogen is a single bond, oxygen is a double bond, and nitrogen, our um, diatomic, is a triple bond. So you know that this is the longest, weakest bond. That's middle of the road in length and strength. And then here, this is our smallest bond, and is also the strongest bond. So how does that change this right here? Um, well, let's do green for our nitrogen. It's going to be a little bit smaller and it's stronger. So it goes down further. Sorry, that's not very smooth on that curve. Um, so it's going to have a greater strength and a shorter length like that. Now the oxygen, Let's do red for our oxygen. I'll do red as the oxygen right here. And the blue was the hydrogen. Okay, so our oxygen, it's in between length and it's also in between energy, strength. Uh, so it's going to fall right in the middle here. It's going to be about right like that. Oh, actually, maybe even a little deeper. Sorry, let's go a little bit deeper than that. I am not fabulous when it comes to artwork. So notice um, it has greater bond energy than the hydrogen, but not as great as the nitrogen. And it's not quite um, as long as the hydrogen, um, but it's definitely longer than the nitrogen. So putting these all together, this of course is going to be our longest bond and nitrogen is the shortest. As a result, for strength, the hydrogen is going to be our weakest and the triple bond is the strongest. And it's the internuclear distance that shows us that, that shows us that. So now you can interpret that type of curve. I've actually seen this question on an AP multiple choice uh, that students had to identify. Uh, just from this, without any of the labeling on it, um, they had to put in order which line belonged to nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. So there you have it. Have a really nice day.